the cord. Howdy, I'm Dave. Hi Dave, nice Dave, to meet you. He's, he's the guy that runs the camera. Um, it's not a problem that we videotape? No. Alright, cool. Alright, Who's this young man? It's my nephew. I inherited. <laughs> that you inherited. There you go. Um, don't worry about your computer right now, okay? Okay. Um, Gigi wants you to play in the front yard. Uh, or go get your bike. If you'd like. I'm going to let Stinky out in the backyard with these gentlemen. And I, I want you to be somewhere separate, okay? okay? So you can either play inside in your room or you can play outside in the front. Come on, it's not a major life decision. <laughs> Okay, I'll so, put you out in the back. Okay, so you wanna you wanna give us a little preview again, um, to yep. make sure that we that yes. we know everything that's going on. So you, you said that uh, you're having you're having aggressive issues with mostly with kids. No, mostly with men. Mostly with men. Okay. Yeah. And that's why I say you'll probably fit her because the guy that I got her from was a big guy and like big guy, right. Chuck driver guy full beard, full mustache, all that, and, and I don't know, she just freaks out, I mean, my son is tall, like you, Yeah. no beard, no mustache, mm -hmm. so, so it's really, I mean, I, I don't know how to... So whenever, um, whenever you are, whenever somebody's coming up, then you know somebody's coming, do you get nervous about the dog whenever it's a man as opposed to whenever it's a woman or a child? Oh well, yeah, I, I worry that... Today's going to be the day she whacks out. Right. You know. Um, so when was the first incident that, like, what, what was the first incident that got you concerned about this? When, when I purchased her in Texas County, whatever, Missouri, when I went down there to get her. I paid the guy the money. He signed the papers, gave me right. the paperwork. I put the paperwork in the truck, and I went to reach for her leash. She tried to take my hand off. Yeah. So, Okay. So All right. it's been, you know, I mean, since the day one, since right. five minutes of meeting her, I, my fear is that she's going to attack someone. Right. Well, and I've had her almost a year. Next month will be a year. Mm -hmm. So she's not getting any better. Right. You know what I mean? Well, a lot of times uh, we ended up in this situation to where the dogs, because dogs are very good at reading nonverbal signals. They are very good at sensing uh, what kind of emotional state somebody is in. And so whenever, this is a very typical thing that I deal with, is when somebody has fear about the dog to start with, they end up, um, they, somebody, somebody's, coming, somebody's coming up and then mom gets nervous and anxious all of a sudden and then the dog sees this new person arrive at the same time that mom gets anxious. Well, and it's, and not, so therefore, it's not a new person. Well, what, but it's new to the dog. You know what I mean? It's, it's, well, a, it's only an, the one time. Well, when like, I'm, like my son, my sons, they were they were coming every Sunday for mm -hmm. Sunday dinner at Grandma's. Well, right. So, but think about the fact that the dog can't communicate with you, and you can't tell the dog, "Hey, I am approving this particular right. person." No, and the I only thing try that, to talk her through it and tell her it's okay; they're not going to hurt you. Well, she can't understand that right. because I mean, they don't. They, so, so the idea is is that she's going off of just your emotional state. Right. So, if somebody comes and approaches and that happens at the same time that you start getting anxious, right. then she's automatically going to assume that they are the ones that you are anxious about that and hurt. that they're going to hurt. Right. And so we end up inadvertently teaching our dog and reinforcing our dog to go out and protect us from whoever said people, is. whoever right. it happens to be. Right. And so a lot of times it is indeed our nerves that make the difference. And that probably is the best thing that I can tell you in this first half hour right. that, um, that will make a difference is because if you presume if you if you have the ability to um, to control the anxiety a little bit or at least present it differently then it might tell her hey I'm not actually anxious about this person you know and so now and I and in this situation I want you to understand that we like I'm a professional for sure and I know how to deal with this I deal with aggressive dogs on a very 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 regular basis and I've had lots and lots of success with it and I also know how to defend myself from an aggressive dog so um, try your best not to be nervous about it this is a good okay. situation this is a the opportunity for healing in the long right. run and if we can get you pointed in the right direction right. in this evaluation then we can go ahead and do that
Okay. So you said you want us out back? Yeah, I wanted to go to the back porch. I'm going to let her out in the house, mm -hmm. and then she'll obviously notice you guys out there right away. She already knows we're here. I knocked oh, on the door. That, yeah, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. well, that's, I have a male also. Oh, okay. But the male I've had since he was nine weeks old. He right. knows no aggression. No, He loves mm -hmm. all people. I mean, that right. kid, when he was a puppy, got carried around right. with his socks by my dog's partial tail. You right. know what I mean? But it's different when you raise them in a loving caring environment absolutely you know what i'm saying and so yeah it's just socialization dogs are different like day and night mm -hmm. yeah they the the one uh, one dog understands that everybody is potential not, friends right. the other one does not understand that at all and that's where she the, thinks nobody is yeah she she thinks that uh that everybody is is somebody that needs to be defended Danger. against so i'm going to teach you how to express to her that she is the one that's making you anxious not the people and, uh, and uh, that'll be a, it's, okay. it's a fairly easy thing. So we're gonna go ahead and go out back and then uh, we're gonna see her at the door. Yeah. And then you said you can, you, you'll get her calm down. Yeah, and, and then I'll her out on the leash on her. Yeah. Uh, that'll be fine. <laughs> Commence operation, don't get bit. Right. Oh. I won't let you get bit, you're my buddy. <laughs> I guess, uh, why don't you head over there, that way you don't have the sun directly in the in the background, does that, that look like a, a little bit more, a little bit better picture? Does this thing have a zoom on it? Yeah, actually, come on, come on up here for a second so you can see her at the door, and then you can go back whenever we invite her out. It happens sometimes. It happens actually more more times than not. Nope. Easy. She been bred. Easy. 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 She care. Easy. She's a pretty dog. She's beautiful, and I love her to death, nope. and it just breaks my heart, you know yeah. what I'm saying? But nope. I got 13 grandbabies that, nope. as you can see, there's kid toys everywhere, and she just... So as you're standing right now, she's in, she's in range where if she lunged and you moved even like a couple inches, oh, that, yeah. she, that she would get somebody. So we want to keep that in mind. But you're doing the right thing in the fact that you're not keeping tension on the leash. Right. Nope. Nope. Can you sit? What a good girl you are. Oh, there you go. All right. So this is a good rhythm that we can get into, is if you can keep your anxiety down to where she doesn't feel like you're anxious about the person coming in. Right. Especially whenever you're dealing with people that, um, that are not typically anxious about dogs to start with. Right. Sit. Well, I mean, they all love her and they all, gear. you know, approach her all and right. try to pet her. And like one day she's fine and the next day she's just mm -hmm. ready to chew someone's head off. Well, I mean, that sounds to me like she's triggering off on something in particular that is not steady with the situation. So it's not just when people show up. It's maybe when people show up and you get anxious about it that she says, I need to protect mom. Which is her trying to do the right thing. Right. It's like her trying to be a good girl, and that's right. fine, and right. we don't get mad and at her about it. We want her to it. be protective, you right. know what I mean? We want now, to. Now, think about it in these terms. It's like if you're worried, if you, if you think that there's this has some sort of association with men, which I get that actually all the time, right. it, it, is people think that their dogs don't like men, and it's generally a woman, and it's generally uh, somebody who a man set the dog off the first time right. for an inadvertent reason, 
but then Sit. the woman Sit. decided that the the, the woman decided herself that the dog Sit. didn't like men. And then whenever Stay. the next man came, Stay. Stay. whenever the next man came along, they got anxious because it was a man coming up, and they, so they assumed that it was men, and then they were actually creating the situation. And that happens all the time, and it happens with you know people well, thinking it's the, women as the well. The people that come here are like my brother. Mm -hmm. Uh, one day she'll like him, one day Sit. she'll take bacon right out of his hand, mm -hmm. and the next day she's j lunging at that door to get at him. How many people has she actually gotten a hold of? Nobody. She has never gotten a hold She's of anybody? never gotten a hold of anybody. Oh, that's, well, I mean, that's good news. But, but like, that, my nephew Sit. that lives here, like, he'll be walking nope. through the house. Stay. Sit. He'll be walking through the house, and she'll, like, get his, you know, like, the bagginess of his shirt right. with her teeth. So that is just a Rottweiler playful thing. Right. No, and it's not a playful thing. It's saying, hey, I want you out of my house. You make me nervous, I want you out of my house. Well, then, my Mastiff does that. That's because he's always on the move. I mean, right. he's a seven-year-old. He can't sit still. He, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He, well, and Rottweilers are also herding dogs. So um, that's on. that's important to know. And so whenever there's a bunch of little kids running around, she thinks that it's her job to keep them in keep check them and together. so i mean like there's a possibility that that's not a very that's not a super aggressive thing can you sit nicely that's very good that's a good girl and she tries yeah and, i mean she's so she, nice most of the times will listen to me but like the other day the neighbor's dog for that house way over across the street yeah. came over into her zone mm -hmm. well of course I want her to be defensive in her zone. This is her zone, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? That neighbor's dog comes over and tries to fight with my male dog, cause it's a male that, that was, you know, before we got her. And, but anyway, that neighbor's way over there by the lake dog came and was in the zone and she went outside the zone. Mm -hmm. Cause you know, when she went lunging and barking all crazy hysterical, right. The dog was like, whoa, 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 let me get out of here, you right. know? And she followed him, or I don't, I don't even know if it's a male or female, but she followed it outside the boundaries and got zapped mm -hmm. to get there. Right. And then when the lady came across, because she came all the way across the back of this trailer yard to, to get her puppy on a leash, and she was trying to attack her for like trying to get her puppy right so um yeah i mean and, and the dogs can't understand trying to get the puppy they don't understand those those right. particular contexts they right. they just understand energy they they understand respect for space just like i just got right there right. um and so it's a very important thing for us as the leaders of the house to respect respect from her or i'm sorry expect respect right. from her and make sure that she understands that it's not her job to protect the place whenever we are present. Right. Right? And no. So, no. so this is... Hey! Come here. Yeah, good girl. She's probably dying to go potty. She's beautiful, though. Mama's girl. Yeah, we, we can take her out to go potty. Her mama's girl. Yeah. Mama. Go potty. So, if she's coming behind, I, I will, of course, hey. expect respect. And then, so now here's the situation. Like she is looking at Dave. She doesn't understand what Dave's doing here. He, she doesn't understand the context because she doesn't know what video signals are and all of these good things. So she understands that I'm here to interact. I'm not a threat because I'm coming, giving her food. Animals only give animals food in nature when they're supremely happy with them. So that makes sense to her. And so I've told her that I'm, Right. That I'm not here for any right. in, in any right. ill will. Dave has not interacted with her at all. Dave, because he's operating a camera, is not acting like a human or acting like an animal at all. Right. He's acting very much like a human, but not like an animal. And so she doesn't have any idea what he's here for. And so here, here's here's the deal. And this is the biggest thing that I can teach you. In the situation where I want to tell her, like if I was anxious about her getting in at Dave. This is the way that I approach. You see, I put myself in between Dave right. and the dog, right. and I focus all of my attention at the dog, not at Dave. A lot of times what people will do is they will have the dog at the end of the leash, and they'll be pulling back on it, which is exactly how I get dogs to get really excited about toys and want to bite them. Right. 
you know. Get back. And so if you are standing behind the dog, pulling back on it, you're just going to further excite the dog and make it want to go after that make thing it more. Worse rather than Where, better is what you're saying? Yes. And so if you um, actually get in between, put my back to whatever I say is mine. So by me standing right here, I'm telling the dog, this guy is my guest. Right. And I'm willing, and you are the one that I'm- a big old liar. Right. Well, it's a difference of approach. Right. It's, it's absolutely a difference of approach. I come with some measure of authority in the fact that I will put this weird thing in between you and I, right. and I will protect myself. I will expect space. No. And animals understand space is respect. So I expect space from you. And whenever I want her to leave him alone, I claim him, which is exactly what I'm doing. I'm saying, this guy's mine. You are the one that I'm talking to. You need to give him respect. And dogs understand that right away. You've been working on shake. Yeah. Shake. See what I, I don't. Mean? I don't. Get as she is. You moved and she's jumping. Like, that's just, Whoa! What's happening? That's just regular animal response, and she's doing that out of respect for me. Is whenever I moved, she's giving me space. If I moved and she didn't give me any space, then that would mean that she doesn't think that I'm worth much of anything. Like I'm not, I'm not somebody who needs to be paid attention to. And so we do want to expect dogs to move for us. We want them to hop too and, and get, and get moving whenever that situation happens. That doesn't mean we got to beat them to do it right. for sure. No, and that's, I've never beat dogs. I don't beat dogs or kids. Well, you know, I, I mean, just, it, that only makes your problem worse rather than better to me. Uh, the, it's, it, it is not a tool that you use in almost any situation. Now there is some situations if she were to come over here and grab a hold of my leg with her canines, then yeah, physical force is necessary in that right. moment. But is it necessary any time before that? No, absolutely not. Um, very, very rarely. You know, physical discipline is not something we want to avoid wholesale because dogs speak, don't speak English. They speak physical. Right. They speak physical language, they speak physical action, and whenever a dog disciplines a dog, it pins it down to the ground physically. Right. So if we try to speak to them, it's like if I came and gave this lesson, uh, Dave, Dave was studying Japanese on the way in here. If he came and tried to give this lesson in Japanese, it wouldn't work very well because you don't speak Japanese, I assume anyway. And um, so if you don't speak Japanese, and I'm trying to teach you in Japanese, you're not gonna learn anything. Whereas if I speak your language, then you might learn something. It'll be a lot easier for you to understand if I speak the language that you actually speak. And dogs do actually speak physical. They speak body language, they watch the way that we move, they watch the energies that we have, and they respond to the fact that, you know, we come in and take and take over space right. and stuff like that. They focus on the direction. You know, if I was sitting here and I was saying, hey Dave, go do this, blah, 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 then Dave wouldn't understand because he speaks English. But if, a, if I was sitting here and I said to the dog, hey dog, go do this, if the dog hasn't been taught the commands, it doesn't understand at all because it can't assume I'm directing something at them if I'm not facing them. So when I'm directing my correction towards her saying, you are doing the wrong thing right now, I need to be facing her and I want to put the thing that I'm protecting behind me. So that's going to be the biggest thing that will make a, make a big difference. And it's not a matter of the e-collar or anything like that, which I think the e-collar is a good tool, but it sounds to me like she also gets a little stirred up by it. Right. If it is making her more excited and more intense, then I wouldn't be worried about that. I wouldn't be worried about using the e-collar as much. If, it's, if it is helping her to calm down, which e-collars usually do, right. is that once the dog gets the stimulation, it it, it's like a short like circuit. It stops and thinks, and that, that's what I want her to do. Stop and think. What that, am I doing? Why is right. why am I? You know. And then then make sure after you correct that you actually give her direction of what it is you do want her to do. Because the right. only thing an e collar tells you is I'm not happy with what you're doing. Right. Look at that playful little girl. Yeah. Yeah, good girl. Yeah, she's very very loving when she's loving. Yeah. But she's very. Aggressive when she's, mm -hmm. you know, not, not wanting, mm -hmm. you know, or, I mean, well, we I, mean I don't feel threatened by the people that are coming because, like, you're the first stranger that's been here probably in a year. Right. It's my kids, my son-in-law, you know, my brother. Right, you're anxious about like the people you care people. about being hurt. 
you're less anxious about me because if I get hurt, I mean, like, we don't have any interaction. You know, it's a little, no, it's it, a little bit it, different. It, it makes me super nervous for her sake. Cause I don't want her to, right? You know, like if she gets out and goes down the way, someone's gonna shoot her. Right. Then she's gonna suffer and be in all this, you know, agonizing, whatever. So, but just keep in mind that she knows when you're worrying, but she doesn't know what you're worrying about. Right. So you want to be very clear about expressing to her what you're worried about. And if you can't, try your best not to worry. So how would I like, okay, so my kid pulls up, you know, they always call and say, hey, we're here, where's your psycho dog? You know, did, mm -hmm. you, did you put your dog up, whatever, whatever. And so then how would I, I mean, like, it's never been, but like twice that she allows me to just like bring her out the door on the leash and then she's happy to see everyone and then that day's great. And then next Sunday he comes over and she, he doesn't call and say he's close, so we're all in the house, you know, because they live inside. And she's lunging at that door. I mean, like pouncing her whole body weight against that door okay. as he's standing there waiting for me to do something so him and his kids can come in the house. Right. So if we follow the same claiming principle, what would be your action at the door to be able to tell her that she's the one that's the problem and these people are okay? Right. I, I would just tell her no. Not okay, Siggy, you're bad. Don't do that. that, that she doesn't understand those words, And then she words, goes and though. gets kenneled up, and then they come on in. Okay, so number one, dogs do not understand kenneling as a correction. It's just prevention. It's good to do. Right. Don't get it wrong. It's a very good thing but to do. But even then, she's moving the whole thing across the floor with her whole body weight to get into, you know, because it's in the uh, living room, and then say we're all in the kitchen or the front living room. Okay. So what I'm telling you is, is that hours can go by and she's still <laughs> at the same guy that she liked last week. Well, because you never told her not to do it. Oh, no, I tell her not to do it. You didn't tell her not to do it in a way that she understands. What? Okay. Right. And so I'm trying to tell you what we can do about that situation is say Dave is the is your kids that are trying to come in the door and I'm you. And you're the dog, right? You're barking at Dave because you don't you don't understand that Dave's supposed to be here. And I can't say any words to tell you that I that you're being a problem right now. Right. What I'm going to do is, is I'm going to claim the door, claim Dave, which happens to be your kids at this point. I'm going to I'm going to inject myself in between right. her and the door. And then I can say no, and that makes sense right. to her and, and I would just use the word no or nope or whatever right. you like. One word that means I don't want you to do that. And it's always the same word, no matter if she's right. getting on the couch, yeah, no matter if she's... She's very important. Right, right, just one word so that she actually can pick it up because dogs don't speak language. It's not right. one of those things they, they do. And then right. you come in between and you tell her, no, you're being the problem. And you cue her off of the situation and you tell her that she needs to give space to these people on my authority, right? right? Or on your authority, essentially, right. is right. in that situation. So if she is coming in like if at this point she decided she was going to go for dave your job would not be to just hold back right. your job would be figure out a way to get in between her and dave and say get out of here you're being a problem right. he's okay you're not right. and then she goes oh shoot you don't want me to keep these people away because right now if you stand behind and you just bark with her because if you're just sitting there saying a bunch of words she doesn't understand right you're basically just barking with her and that's just going to amp her up even more and basically you're encouraging her to keep doing better. that right right so what we want to do is we want to speak the language she can understand which is body posture we turn our back to the thing that we want want to approve and we say you're the issue and 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 be and be assertive you know i've it. never done that I've right i always just you know tried to reason with her you know um in her situation i always come down to her level mm -hmm. and you know, try to talk to her peacefully, try to, like, I guess, like my husband calls it, you're always trying to reason with her. You don't reason with a dog. You're the boss. Well, I, I would I would tend to agree with you. You know, so. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, so you see how, I, you see how I came in and I turned my back to? That is, a, that is an announcement to her that, hey, I'm not, you know, I'm not a threat to you. Right. You know, and then whenever I need space, hey, you're getting a little close to me. I will expect it from her. I mean, that's exactly how I got bit here. Right. Is is I, I chose the wrong dog, and I and I, I I was assuming they had a different motivation. 
they were territorial and they just wanted to claim their yard and they wanted me out of their yard. I came in and gave them a hot dog and then I turned sideways to talk to the owner and the dog nailed me. You know. So, but that's the thing. It's right now her deal and what and is very normal for Rottweilers is they right. just want to protect. They're very confident dogs. They're very big dogs. They're bred for this right. reason to keep undesirables away. Right. But if we continue to non-verbally tell them that people are undesirable who are actually supposed to be there, then they will get very confused. Right. And so we can. What what our problem here is not that you have an aggressive dog. It's you have a confused dog and. You, and you need to be really careful about how you communicate to her that people are okay. And you don't do it by hollering and, and yelling things because dogs, very first, whenever they're born, their nose is open. Next is their eyes, then their ears. And so they think in that same, in that same frame of mind. Cesar Milan talks about this all the time. Nose, eyes, ears. So we obviously can't teach them by smell that these people are okay until time passes and they get used to the smell of them. But if we are sitting there trying to get a hold of them by their ears, their eyes will always take precedence over that. So if you can get in between them and say, this one's mine, she'll understand it. And, and then the problem will start to go away pretty, pretty quickly right. because she'll understand because she's a very good natured dog. Right. She's got a great disposition. She's just confused. And that's really the biggest okay. issue right here. And now I'm not saying that, you know, do this and only this and your problem goes away after well, right. this one no, conversation. I, I totally just that. just to cover cover my butt in the situation. But that is your key thing that you're gonna do with any dog because she does not seem like a complete maniac to me. Right. And that's why and if it's she so becomes weird because she's so loving and then all of a sudden, you know, somebody pulls in and she's just like psycho, like Sybil almost. Like, right. whoa, where did my loving girl go? Well, don't worry about that. Just tell her, I don't want this girl that's here right now. Right. And and just be very frank with her. Don't don't try to um, sugarcoat it or pacify her. Yeah, pacifying a dog is the exact wrong thing to do. If right. you pet a dog or you speak calm, speak in nice voices to them when they're doing this aggressive behavior, they, then they are hearing from you that you're happy with them for doing this aggressive behavior and you want more of it. So, when when they become aggressive, you say as few words as possible, and only the word that she knows means you're doing the wrong thing, which is no, right. and you just make that the only word, and then you come in and you show her with your body what it is I want you to do, right. what, it, what it is that's right and wrong. Yeah. Dave's, Dave is safe. He is okay. He's approved by me, you know, and I'm telling you that by putting my back to Dave, because animals do not turn their back on animals that they're right. afraid of. And if you turn your back on Dave, you're telling her, I'm not afraid of this guy. And then if you point your assertiveness towards her, your sternness towards her, and say, you're the one that is making me anxious right now, because animals attack anxiety. She's getting anxious, you're anxious about her anxiety, and you attack her anxiety instead. Now, that doesn't mean we actually have to hurt, because right. you see, I did it a bunch of times today, and I'm a stranger, right. and I just came in and I, and I used my posture to tell her, you're the problem. Right. Not this guy. And then at that point, then then the dog will be like, oh, okay. Nope. Thank you. Good girl. Good girl. Yeah, she you see how I just corrected her? Chew on anything, she gets her lips on. You see how I just corrected her and then she went knows. right and went right back to positive? I mean, That's another good thing that you can do. Right from wrong. She knows what's acceptable and what's not. Yeah. No. Also teach your, the, your guests, your family and everything. Don't talk, don't touch, don't make eye contact right. until the dog is calmed down. Right. If, you, if you're coming in the house, I will posture the dog off. You just come in and get settled. Right. And then you don't hold, mind her. You business. claim just mind your own you, business. You claim right. these people. So if they call, all come in and sit down, you can back her all the way up into the kitchen and say, you're going to wait right there. Right. And then you turn your back to the whole room full of people and, she'll, and wait for her to settle down. Let her get all the way settled down. And then once that's the case, then you turn your back on her saying, now I'm not worried about you. Right. And then you should have a better interaction uh, with letting people into the house. Um, that's, that's actually, I mean, like, that's probably going to be the biggest thing. And, and you know, Merry Christmas. Her, I need to be the boss. You need to be the boss. Yeah, dogs do not follow, they, dogs are not like human beings to where well, if you treat them nicer, they will respect you. You know, how cowered down, cowered, I mean, literally for so many months, it was so bad. I mean, and like you pick up a fly swatter and she about knocks the back out of her kennel to get in it. 
Mm -hmm. With the, you know, nobody's even telling her to get in there. Well, then that means you have an easy time at, at, at dissuading her from things, but uh, trying to get her to go away from things. If, if she'll be that skittish over a supply swatter, which Rottweilers are bred to be, any kind of guard dog are bred to be a little um, startling. Aware. Aware. Yeah, they're easy to startle and stuff like that because that makes them better guard dogs. Right. You know, and so um, if that's the case, use that to your advantage and use it to explain to her what it is that she's doing wrong. Don't try to calm her down. Don't try to, don't try to tell her you're doing good whenever she's doing bad because that's, I mean, that's essentially. Stop. That, that, that's essentially Stop. not being truthful with her. Stop. So w the biggest important thing with dogs is you want to be honest with them. If they're doing something that you don't like, you want to tell them that, that you want to tell them that they're doing something you don't like. No. If they're doing something that, that they like or that you like, then you want to tell them that they're doing. And then they will be not confused, and when they're not confused, they will ch they will start to realize what is what it, situations okay. de determine what behavior, and they'll start to learn what they're supposed to be, and then there won't be any chaos and everybody will become calmer and then they'll know that things are right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. I mean like that's basically like that's the biggest thing. If you're going to use the e-collar to stop her in situations like that, you need to get really good at using the no word before you hit the button. Just like whenever Give she... Give her the chance yeah, first. If she, if she did something, if she was doing something I didn't want her to, I would say no first. That's the warning. The beep, the vibration, forget all that. Don't use those as warnings. The no word is the warning because then that prioritizes her listening to your word, which is the most important thing. That's what we want. And so, and if you're going to use the e-collar correction, it is absolutely critical that she understands where it comes from and why it's happening. And so if she goes to do something and you say no and she ignores you, then correct her. If you say no and she doesn't ignore you and she stops doing it, no correction. So she gets to determine whether she gets the correction or not. But she always gets the warning of the word no. Now that could be very quick. It could be no nope, button. If if absolutely necessary. If we're in a right. if we're in a crunch time, right. I'll go nope, press, and then that will work. But it needs to be firm enough. If she's going to attack something and it's not high enough, it will just amp her up more. And I've seen that happen plenty of times when you have well see and that's the thing with like the boundary so i would worry about the e-collar less I, I don't think that that is going to be the big thing for you until you get the claiming thing under control yeah. and then if you get the claiming thing under control and it still is not getting any better then then we sh then the call e me back and we'll talk about what to do with the e-collar but for right now i don't i don't think that that's um the problem with like hey. the boundary thing siggy siggy you don't need to do that on camera. <laughs> you don't need to do that on camera. The problem with the boundaries right. is I have another dog mm -hmm. who has, he's only went out of the boundary one time when he was like six months old. Mm -hmm. He's now coming up on four. Mm -hmm. It zapped him one time and he's like, uh-uh, I ain't right. messing with it. She go out every day. So I can't turn it up on her and not on him. Well, if he doesn't test the boundary, then I would turn it up for her. But I can't turn it up on only one collar. That's no, turn it up on both collars because he doesn't test it. He won't ever get shocked because he doesn't ignore. Doesn't go. He doesn't right. go to where he gets shocked. Right. So right. I mean, like I, that, I wouldn't. That I wouldn't. I wouldn't make the zero corrections that he's going to get lighter, and allow her to continue to break the boundary. Right. You know, as opposed to. Make sure that she gets what she needs, and he, he who already knows how to avoid it, right. it's turned up for him. And if he decides at this point that he wants to ignore it for the first time and however long, right. then he'll find out that it's an even worse idea now than, than before. Yeah, well, but none of these right. none of these uh, electric fences or e-collars can hurt the dog. They're not going to hurt the dog at all. The thing that bothers the dog with the e-collars... <laughs> Well, don't let it though, because yeah. because it's going to hurt you a lot more when the dog gets hit or shot or any of these things. Right. Like that's going to be a lot worse. Right. So this is a minor, minor, minor and out correction. Here, that's what they do. Everybody shoots before they even know. My mom's or... dog got shot last last year, and I told her how to. Uh, <laughs> you know, but the point of the matter is, is that uh, that that is a rural thing. It's a real danger. Just like if you're in town, getting hit by a car is a bigger deal. It's more more possible there. So either way, the boundary is a boundary. And it needs to be respected. And if you don't respect it, you put me, you, and everybody else at risk. Right. And you are going to get the worst end of it because you're the one that's going to get squished. So it's better for them to get a little mild stimulation right. 
that is enough to make a difference than for them to get squished. You know, and that's the way I feel about it. And, you know, I mean, I don't know. I'll, I'll talk to God one of these days I'm and figure out if I'm right. But by being so, oh, she was already had a bad life. Let me be extra nice. Let me be more lenient, I guess you'd say. See, that's I'm the, making it what, worse. When, when, when the, she's had a bad life, what you want to do, the kindness that you give to her is clarity. You want to you want to explain to her very clearly what's right and wrong and that way she can actually prevent herself from getting into bad situations because if she can prevent herself then it's no longer on you whether or not you're harsh to the dog because the dog never offends right you know and so it's it's more reasonable to be a little stern up front the first time to make sure that the message is heard and it's understood and it can't be confused like right. were they mad at me were they not mad at me i don't right. i don't know because right. they're just barely Yelling. scowling at me right. you know they, but if you if you come in you go hey get out of here you know and then they go then they go oh shoot man that was that was very like obviously that. something she didn't like right and and right. then they go well I'll, whatever i did just before that i'm gonna stop doing that because i don't want her to come at me with the stick right and i'm not saying that you got to jab your dog but if you just come at the dog with the stick and everything the dog will give the stick space you know, um, and you can use a cane, you can use a pool scrubber, you can use whatever you need, whatever's right. handy, right. to say, hey, give yeah, this thing like respect. I use my fly swatter. Fly swatters. A lot out. of people do that with the fly swatter, is because they they get the dog once with it, and it doesn't hurt them, but it's enough to startle the dog and make them want to avoid it. Right. And then after that, it's a psychological tool. You know, and there's, there's not, I mean, like some people, there's going to be people out there that are going to fuss about that and say, no, that's cruel to the dog. Right. It's more cruel to leave the dog in anxiety, in my opinion, because anxiety literally kills dogs. Fly swatters don't kill dogs. Well, right. And you know? <laughs> this stick will never kill a dog. Like that, you know, that neighbor could have came over with a gun in her hand. And, right. You know what I mean? My dog would be dead right now. Right. And, 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 and their confusion is the enemy. And if we can get rid of their confusion, you find that dogs become very calm, very relaxed, and they tend to be very trusting, right. and they and get that's along just fine. Right. He loves everybody. Oh, you're here to see me? Oh, that's, you know, my husband teases all the time. Oh, they could rob the whole house, and Diesel will walk around following him. Speak, speaking of which, can the young Jeff! man let the other dog out? Will you go let D out? Out the back door, if you don't mind. Let Diesel out. Come on. Yeah, yeah. back door, if you don't, don't mind. It don't matter. He can't come out the front, remember? Thank you, sir. Yeah. I always hated that when you pull. Yeah, because I want to see. I want to see if there's a different reaction when he's here, as opposed well, to when it's just you. You gotta open the gate. <laughs> what did I do she wouldn't even let him near the puppy, ever. Yeah. Well, yeah, because the puppies are the weaker ones, so she's just trying to protect, right. and that's okay. D cup. Hey, Bubba. Come. Look at this boy. Yeah, he's the lover. The, I mean. Look at that big guy. That's a big boy. Nope. Um, so, no again, space, so. space is respect, and if she's getting a little too much energy and not letting him do his thing, then uh, then it's, it's absolutely fine to just say, hey, no, give us some more space. No. 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 What are you doing, big dog? You're a beautiful dog. Yes, you are. Yeah. He's my German. Mm-hmm. He's, he's just handsome as can be. Sit. Yeah. Sit. Diesel. Diesel. Sit. Good, Good boy. boy. Good boy. Shake. No, Siggy. Hey. You can't ever pet. You can't ever pet one without the other getting Well, and that's again, that's respect. No. That's respect. Dig it. Sit. Sit. Stay. So I, sit. I, I, what I'll do is I'll sit here and I will pet on him. Stay. And she can get, she can try to get here. But if I put no. the stick in between and say, no, you're not going to. No. Then no. that's saying I'm demanding respect, which no. makes me powerful. He's no. a big boy. Yes, he is no. a big dog. I love you. Yes, no. you're wonderful. I love your sister too, but you're awesome. Yeah. And so, just a little bit of respect. Right. Space equals respect. Right. Right. So, she needs to respect your guests. She needs to respect the other dog. To a degree. I mean, like, they're playmates, and I get that. Right. So, there are certain... Hey! hey. Don't pull me! Have you, have you put a prong collar on her? Yeah. Okay. And she still pulls... 
she still pulls whenever she's on the prong? No, one? not when she's on the prong one. Okay. Well, then I would just make that her standard thing. You can leave that on her pretty much all the time. All and right. it's never going to hurt anyone. All right. Yeah. Some dogs, Rottweilers are never... Hey! Hey! No. 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 Oh, girl. Yeah. It's almost like if she just wasn't so, so stubborn. Same thing with him, though. Just because he's the one that's been around and has has not uh, caused his. It's all right. Okay. So, the idea is is you want it to be taut around the neck when it's loose. Whenever if there's no pressure on the leash, it should still be fairly snug around the neck. Alright, so as you're moving it, my hand wants me better every time. Yeah, she does it yeah. to me too. Yeah. Don't stop. Now I would I would say um in general I don't like it when dogs do that because that's them saying, hey you're gonna pet me. Right. Like I'm the boss, you better pet me. Right. And and we don't want that as a little bit rude. Um, and it definitely makes the um, the distinction of who's in charge a little different. Right. Now it's not the end of the world. Well, no, it's I not. It's not a stop, huge big deal. But, but it's multiple times, but not it, just one. It's it's her trying to be. Oh come on! Trying oh, to get on, trying yeah. to uh, ascend in position. Does that right. make sense? So come here, girl. Come on. You're a good girl. Settle down. Come here. Okay, mama. Let me see. Let me see. Come here. All right, baby. You're a good girl. Got her? Good So you see how I back up? It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. She's fine. Don't don't be nervous about it. It's okay. Hey. It's okay. Here, why don't you just go ahead and step out? Because you're 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 providing a uh yeah, a crutch for her. Come here. Right. Hey, okay. Settle down. Come here, baby. All right. Come here. Hey. No. Come here, Siggy. All right. No. So she gets tense. I keep pushing in. That's when that's when problems happen. Good girl. Good. But she gets tense, and I move her with me. I relieve some pressure by walking away, right. and I move her with me. Then it's a it's a whole different thing because dogs don't animals don't walk away from the thing that they're scared of. Right. They they and they certainly right. don't pull it towards them. Right. You know, which is a whole different ballgame. Come no. down. All right, let's go with the camera. I haven't heard. We just, it's just for, uh, we uh, we actually use it for um, training purposes and making no, sure that talking, we... No, he's talking about our camper. Oh, I thought you said We're the camera. To... No, no. Okay. It's all right, baby. Shh. We have our yeah. camper out for repair. Where did I put the, uh, where did I put the treats? Um, I just so, there. you can use treats. Yeah. You can use treats to add a positivity to a situation whenever a dog's getting anxious. And it, it works great. It causes dopamine in the brain the same way as drinking right. beer or smoking cigarettes or something like that. Right. Um, and it will change. It'll change the way that they think about things. Right. You know, and it'll create. It'll, it'll help them to create an even better association with this. With. If we need to bribe them a little bit. Yeah, so see, that's that's her issue. She's too nervous. She's a very nervous dog, and that that can very much lead to. Lead to reactivity, and and also you know like protective type of deals because they I mean like they breed Rottweilers to be nervous, right. so that they will be better guard dogs. Right. That's what they were intended for in the first place. It's like she automatically thinks everything and everybody's gonna hurt her. Right. Well, Angel's put that collar on her, no problem. Can you? 
I want to see if it's tight enough. So you always open them up from the middle. So in order to get it back on, you pinch these two together and then push it back first. Hey, Carol, what is it? You always put the collar as high up on the thing as possible to get them both in. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that looks like the right size right there. And so, right there. And so, if you just take the leash and uh, put it onto that one, you'll notice that her her pulling will stop pretty much immediately. She walks pretty good. And now, the good part about this of having this particular piece of equipment on is the fact that she, when she decides to fuss about where about what direction she's going the harder she fusses the more it bothers her right it doesn't bother you more it right. bothers her more good right. girl he's it that's it that's good all right and so whenever we go to walk and she doesn't keep up she hits the end of the collar and it means something to her right. you know whenever she whenever she goes and runs after a child or something like that and we hold tight you know, put it against your hips like this, and it'll put it towards your center of gravity. And she hits the end of that real hard. The harder she hits it, the worse it is for her, uh -huh. not for us. Right. So she can learn that her actions are what's causing her consequence. Right. Now, and it's different than just hollering words at them that they don't understand, right. you know. And then at that point, you can say, come on, we're going this way. And you get to keep the same presence of mind, the same kind of attitude. You don't have to get stirred up. You don't have to get anxious. Right. You don't have to get anything right. because you know that the dog will actually stop beforehand and if every time she's going towards the end of the collar if you say that no word she'll it's learn that the no the word comes before she hits the end of the collar right. and then you can start to stop her with your words as opposed to the collar because we don't want her to keep hitting the end of the collar right, that's right. not that's not the goal right come here girl good girl yeah what a good girl is. so those are the things that i can give you in the in, in this period of time that will make a make a the most difference but I don't mind using an implement like this because dogs give it respect. And so if I want her to move, I don't have to whoop her with it. Right. I just show it to her. I just, I just yeah. push her with, my, with the space and she gives it space. Well, I need to quit being so loving and more assertive. I mean, really when it comes down to it, yeah, that's almost always the problem. Right. Is people want to pet the angry yeah. energy. Yeah. And that's where you are. Anytime it's you're petting the dog, or you're speaking kindly to it, you're petting the energy that they're having. And so if they're anxious and, and you want to encourage anxiety, then pet them while they're anxious. If you if they're hyper and you pet them while they're hyper, they will become more hyper. Right. So if you want to discourage that, then you go with something that is a little more corrective. Otherwise, you're just confused. You know, she just ends up confused all the time. And right. she thinks that that's what you want. And you, you have the ability to just communicate to her and say, hey, that's how you get to keep those. They come, they come with the evaluation. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm gonna go ahead and let you keep the collar too. So, well, he can pay you. No, there's the, the evaluation's always free. So, how about if, Diesel? What can you do with Diesel? Anything you want. He's hyper, he's yeah. real hyper. If you want to, he if you jump on in, love it on jump in. Up, jump up. I mean, he's a lovely he's dog. I mean, mm -hmm. he, he, he wouldn't buy a fly. Well, so whenever, whenever he jumps on people, they probably open hand push him away. Yeah, and that's that what is, I do. that is petting to a dog. That's the way the dog receives it, is, is that somebody is touching me with a non-aggressive energy. If a dog jumps on me, I poke it in the chest. You know, now, mostly, I let the dog poke themselves in the chest with my fingers. So their action causes their consequence. So it's not that I'm beating on the dog, but I've already met him. He lives right around here. Oh, do you? Yeah, yeah, I live in Morton. All right, so I don't want, I don't want that guy with the damn daddy dogs. Sit. I don't know anything. Sit. That motherfucker didn't train the dogs at all. Oh, I, I get I get more done in three hours Sit. than most people get done in the two thousand dollar programs. Um, it, it's it's if you understand the mind of the dog and what the dog is receiving when you behave a certain way, then you actually communicate with the dog, and the dog understands. And dogs are man's best friend. They want to do and what like you want. Like saying, like when the kids come and she's lunging at the door or whatever, that I need to get between the mm -hmm. situation. Right. So my this. Back to Jack and then like outside and tell yeah, her. Yeah, but, but by the time you get there, he's already calming down. But she calms down every time you get there. Right. So, but we need to make sure that she understands why mom got anxious in the first place. So if the kids roll up, mom gets anxious because she doesn't want the dog to bite the kids. Right. And she's standing she's behind the dog and the that. dog's in between. 
This right here is a position of protection. It, she's not doing it currently, but if she was right here and she's facing me and you're on the other side, she's saying you're hers and I'm the problem. Well, she hasn't tried to bite me ever since I hit her in the head. I, I think, her. Yeah, I think, I think you're missing my point. The point I'm saying is this is a very normal thing. Like say she wanted to get to this backpack. Say this backpack was the kids, right? If I wanted to tell her you can't, you need to give respect to this backpack. Space is respect. And so I want to get in between and I want to say you're the issue. With my back this, to the thing it is that is behind me get. is mine. Like I'm protecting right. Right. what's behind exactly. me. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. It's and I, I, I want to say that, that this backpack is mine and you're the one who is causing me all of my distress. And then you move her off of the situation. You say, hey, get back. And then she gets back and then she understands that I that that this is the thing that I was protecting and it needs to be given respect. Otherwise, I will stand up and do something about it. You know, and it doesn't mean we gotta beat the dog. I haven't, I haven't been physical with a dog in a long time now because I learned the ways that you don't have to, right. you know? But you want to present a physical language though because dogs don't speak English, they only speak physical until we teach them with our physical what the language means. So if we give them the opportunity to understand right off the bat, it's just uh, like I was saying earlier, is if I came and gave this lesson in German, you guys may or may not get it. If I give it in English, as I'm speaking the language you speak, you're gonna understand it quite a bit better. You know, and it's the same thing with the dogs, is people go and they try to speak human to a dog and the dog doesn't speak human. <coughs> now, if you're good at speaking dog first, you can teach them human, and that's what training is. But if they don't, then then you just can, it's just going to be confusing. Yeah, he got so. here. He was out on the back porch. Do, you know, you could, she could run in at the door going crazy. She didn't even bark. <laughs> she was knocking on her, you know, like touching on the glass. She, she yeah. didn't even buzz. Come here, girl. Come here. Come on. No. Mama don't need to save you. Come here. Good girl. That's good. Yeah, she's a perfectly fine dog. She's just confused. Right. That's what it is. Well, and like you said, I've never here. stood between the situation. I've always just been on her side trying to coerce her basically uh -huh. in a nice way to yeah. not act this way start with start with that use the claiming principle right. to explain right. to her clearly what it is that she's doing wrong and that you are upset with her not with not people with coming the people. in right because if you stand there and you you stand behind her and you you stay anxious and people are coming in the door she's going to assume they're the reason you're anxious right and it's not her fault she's just right. confused and so she's going to try to do something about it because she loves you right and that's okay but it's not okay that she actually does something about it. So right. we just have to step in and say, hey, no, you're the one who's out of line here. Right. These people are okay. They're supposed to be Do that, there. and if that doesn't work, give me a call back. <coughs> but, and if it does work, tell somebody else about my service, and then we'll, <coughs> we'll, call, we'll call it good. And you guys can keep it going. Well, I think we need to just schedule a couple appointments. What's your rate? 100 bucks an hour. Yeah, it is 100 bucks an hour, but the fact of the matter is usually what I do is I show up for a three hour session, and if I need to stay longer, I'll stay longer and it doesn't cost me any extra, and we just do one $300 thing, and then I will I will stay until we answer every single problem with your, with your, you know, anything that you guys are struggling with and teach you how to do it. I'll show you how to do it and then teach you and let you do it yourself so that you actually know what it is Sit. and make sure that you're Shake. on the right page, and then Shake. after that. Um, you probably won't ever need me again with any of your dogs. Right. That's, that's talking with both of them? Yeah. I don't charge for dogs. Yeah, Diesel came right dogs. out and jumped right up on him. Hey, how you doing? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's because I know how to present myself to a dog. I know how to say, hey, I'm, well, no, I'm not Well, no, that's a that's my point. Is Diesel? That's how Diesel is. He, oh, he Diesel, loves everyone I, until you give him a reason not to. You yeah. know. What's that dog got to be afraid of? He's gigantic. <laughs> right, and you know he. Right. But it, you know, it, yeah. If you guys do want to do that, that's fine. Um, and like, if you don't want to, you're not gonna hurt my feelings. No, I, I, think, got, I, I got plenty of business. To. And so. I think it's important to Talk the growth of. I mean, my grandchildren are all young. They're not. Mm -hmm. You know, they're gonna always be coming. Right. You know? And you don't want them to also be afraid. I don't want them to be life. afraid to come to my house because right. I don't have control of my dog. So, um, if you guys, yeah, um, that's the way that I usually do it. It's a behaviorist lesson, and I just give you the behavior support. Not the training, because the training is, doesn't really fix it. And you gotta do yeah. 10 times as much training to fix the same problems as good communication does. So I just teach you how to communicate accurately with your dog, and then, and then if you guys have any questions after that, you call me and I'll answer them over the phone, because you already have all the tools you need, and I don't have to sell So you're saying anything. I should leave this on her, even with her that thing uh, ain't gonna shot hurt her. collar if you, thing? If you leave that on her, 
two weeks straight, it is not going to give her any problem. Not not a dog like her. Not with a dog like her neck. There are right. some dogs that it does, right. but not her. Um, so so, that and and actually, that one's that one's way too big for her. Well, yeah. In fact, that one's probably too big for him. Oh. Right, excited. You got it on her. Because it, it big, because bigger but doesn't he, mean he's more. He's good. Effective. See, but I started with him at nine weeks. He'll stop. He sits. You know, I mean, I started all of the training with him when he was young, and I had that ability because he was still so young. And, right. You know what I mean? I got her at a much later time than him. Yeah. And now you have the. She was already like set in her ways. One nope. Down. One now you have the ability to get her socialized. Just right. the same. And when she tries to be poorly to somebody else, which will happen, right. we don't think, consider that a loss. Right. Let her hit the end of the collar and let her realize that that's the problem. And then you explain to her non-verbally what it is she's done wrong and give her another opportunity to do it again. Right. If you take her away and tuck her away in the kennel, she never learns. Right. All she knows she is understand. I got anxious around a person, I tried to bite him, and then I got put in my kennel and I'm no longer anxious, so it works. And that's the idea. Dogs continue so I'm to do things that work. feeding her problem more so than helping her problem is what he's saying. Which is always the case. I mean, like, that's always the case. And it's not anything to be ashamed of or anything like that. It's just Because I feel so speak, sorry for her. We speak as humans. They speak as dogs. And we just need to speak dog to them to start with. And then, and, and then everything goes really easy. What are you doing, girl? Yeah, she's used to being just free out yeah, here. Sweet girl. Yeah. Yeah, and she'll be a completely trustworthy dog as soon as she understands. Right, what her job yeah. is. No problem. I love Rottweilers, man. They're so great. Yeah, me too. They're pretty smart dogs. They are. They're very smart. I had a female once that I got when she was a baby, and then I ended up losing her to... Because I never got her fixed or uh, pregnant, mm -hmm. so it caused, like, female problems for... She didn't get fixed or pregnant, and it caused problems? Yeah. Basically, what they how they explained it to me was it was like an endometriosis for women, okay, which is like female, you mm -hmm. know, issues or whatever. She puked her guts up. I mean, interesting. I I yeah. don't know that I, I I have enough good information to speak on that issue, right. but uh, it was so sad. And then I was like, I'm never getting another dog again. I mean, I've seen lots of dogs that are still intact at five or six and have never been bred, um, and they didn't seem to have any problems, but. I also don't deal with a whole lot of intact females. Right. Most people spay right. females she, she's for breeding control. Fixed. So that does make a difference because one of the protective instincts is well, we've that female had, hormone. We've already had two litters. Yeah. We're just oh no, we're not doing that again. Fair enough. And, and you know I don't, don't want to get rid of her. So, so. cool. Well, um, I, that's going to have to be the end of it. Where I think we've okay. gone.